Hello, this is the Provoked Brawn, and this is the Corsair Nightsaber Wireless. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the features and the highlights of this mouse, and what I like and don't like about it, and show a number of different highlights to it that include, for example, that carbon fiber-like finish in the middle, a symmetrical design that you can see here, and 11 programmable buttons. It has an interesting shape to it that's a bit slimmer than other Corsair mice that I've seen recently. Perfect fit for medium hands with a palm claw or fingertip grip, so it's multi-capable, and it's designed to work with a variety of different games too. You'll see a number of different highlights to it here, including RGB lighting, but there are other things going on that you might not see. Now, one of the things that I don't like about it is that sort of cheap plastic door on the underside where you'll store your Slipstream wireless dongle, and that's where it comes nestled when you get the mouse out of the box as well. And that's a little bit cheap filling for a mouse that's pretty expensive, but it is otherwise very nice for a number of different reasons. It does seem to be pretty capable and satisfying with some good specs that include Corsair's Marksman 26,000 DPI sensor, optical switches, and those quick strike buttons as well, which I'll give you a sound test of later on, which give you a satisfying click to them. It has 11 programmable buttons which you can customize within the software that includes profile buttons, DPI switching buttons, left and right click in the mouse wheel, and some other things. You can see how it fits in my hand here, and I feel it's a little bit slender compared to some other mice. So just to give you a demo of that, here is the Darkstar Wireless, which is another recent Corsair mouse which had a few more buttons on the side. And you can see that's slightly larger, taller, and maybe a bit fatter side to side. And then the Sabre Pro as well. Again, same sort of thing. So the Knight Sabre just feels a little bit more slender, a bit lower to the desk. And it does actually remind me of the Logitech G903. That mouse was ambidextrous with buttons on both sides, whereas the Knight Sabre isn't but it does have that same sort of aesthetic to it in that it's quite slimline. You will see from these various different shots though, that it has a slightly ergonomic curve on the left-hand side. It's very much for right-handed gamers with those thumb buttons on the left and no buttons on the right-hand side, but it is still a interesting fit and shape. Now you have USB-C connectivity and you can get fast charging out of it. So just 15 minutes of plugging this in will give you up to 20 hours of battery life is the claim. However, Corsair also claims up to 100 hours of battery life, but it's important to remember that that's just via Bluetooth. You'll only get up to 65 hours of continuous use using the Slipstream wireless dongle. But again, that is going to be influenced heavily by the RGB lighting and the settings that you have in IQ you can get up to a 2000 hertz polling rate over wireless or 8000 when plugged in i'll show you that in the software later on but obviously things like that are going to negatively impact the battery life i did find i was plugging it in a little bit more often than the claim of 65 hours probably about half that but then i had the rgb lighting on most of the time so it's worth keeping that in mind also the USB C cable was a little bit fiddly to plug in it might be a bit of faffy. I don't think the design's great down there in terms of how you access it. You can see the sort of channeling for it. So it's not that easy to plug in in a hurry, I don't think. But you can get some warnings about whether it's running low on battery life or not, or just to try and extend the battery life remotely and easily with various settings in IQ. I do like the design of the mouse wheel, though. You'll see it has a nice texture grip on it. And as I said, you've got left and right click. Also, the fit in the hand you'll see here what I was talking about with how it sits on the desk. So I prefer a palm grip personally. You can see there's quite a gap there. It doesn't really support the palm in terms of pushing up into it. So just keep that in mind if you prefer that style too. But I think if you use a claw or fingertip grip, you might find it a bit more comfortable. That's not to say it's uncomfortable though. I did find it was pretty agile and easy to get on with. Now, it isn't lightweight by any stretch of the imagination because it's around 90 grams, so it's pretty heavy compared to some of the other super lightweight mice that are out there at the moment, but I still found it was easy to move around. You can see you've got some pretty textured side grips there. I found those a little bit scratchy, to be honest, but they do give you a really good grip capability in terms of being able to hold on to it, and you have got pretty easy access to most of the buttons. 
So obviously you've got the standard back and forward thumb buttons on the left hand side, which you can program. And then you've got some profile switching buttons behind the mouse wheel and DPI up and down buttons on the left hand side on the left side of the main left switch. As I said, you've got quick strike buttons here. So they're tension springs essentially, which means that you instantly activate when you press them and you get quite a satisfying click out of them as well. There was a difference in the sound between the two on my unit though. And I'm going to leave a sound test at the end so you can hear all the different switches. So stick around for that if you're curious to hear it. Now I've been using this mouse for gaming in various different games. A lot of zombie shooters recently, SCP-5K and a bit of ready or not and other things like that but also i want to just test it in aim lab and as you'll see it's pretty responsive and i found that it's accurate enough for most of the games i've been playing with relative ease it just zips about so despite not being lightweight it's got a really good sensor on it i didn't find there was any issues with the latency or anything like that in wireless mode it's just pretty accurate and not problematic i haven't had any problems in terms of responsiveness from it or any signal dropouts or anything either. And it's just a good gaming mouse for a variety of different games. So I don't have any complaints there. And I'm gonna show you what's capable of in the software now as well and talk about that. So here we are in Corsair's IQ software. Uh, the Night Saber Wireless, if you go into the device settings, I wanna show a few things, first of all, that you might not notice immediately. This is currently plugged in with the USB-C cable. But you'll see that it has slipstream wireless polling rate is set to 2000 hertz that's the capability there but in wired usb mode you can actually set it all the way up to 8000 hertz so you can get a much higher polling rate when plugged in than you will otherwise you will notice that it does give you a warning about the communication though and how that might be affected by the battery saving you also have other options in here that include angle snapping the lift off height and button response optimization so options to play around with there's also a sleep mode here to send the mouse to sleep when you're not using it which is probably worthwhile if you're struggling with battery life and obviously the rgb light now it's set to 50 percent as default so if you crank it up higher you're obviously going to lose a bit more battery life so worth keeping that in mind as well now for the key assignments you'll see there are a number of different ones in here. Obviously you've got the left and right click and you have scroll left and right, which is the mouse wheel left and right. And then forward and backwards, which is the usual side buttons and DPI up and down, which is these ones. Now they can all be changed into other buttons. So you'll see, for example, that I have currently set one of the profile buttons. So these buttons behind the mouse wheel are profile up and down as standard, which essentially just switch between various profiles that you might have set up for your mouse, whether you're using different games or just have different uses, let's say for Windows or gaming or productivity reasons. So you might set up different profiles. You can have five onboard profiles, which means you don't need IQ running it. We saved in the memory of the mouse and then you can switch between them with these buttons. But if you're not planning on using that, you could use them for something else. So here you can see, for example, I've programmed quite awkwardly, but just to show that you can do it, one of the buttons here is a profile up button as standard but I've actually set it to the sniper button so under the DPI levels you have five stages of DPI obviously you can go from 100 DPI all the way up to 26,000 if you want to in the various different stages and when you press the side buttons on the mouse it will switch between those also worth noting here you'll see there's an indicator which changes behind there so there's a little LED indicator so you can see at a glance what level your mouse is at currently in terms of DPI level from this indicator on the mouse. But you can also set a sniper button, which obviously sets into a really low DPI level. So you can choose whatever you want. And then when you press the profile button and then switches into that, so they have a really low profile. Now that's just one example. Obviously there are a lot of other potential things that you could do. You could change, for example, maybe they don't want DPI buttons. So we could just go through and you can see that you can do all sorts of things. You can record macros in here. You can disable buttons that you don't want to use. You can change uh, specific keystrokes or keyboard shortcuts buttons from there. And, and you can map basically everything you want to. It's really straightforward to do as well. So in the example I'd given with the sniper button, you could maybe do it with one of these buttons. So DPI down, and then you just select sniper. And then you've got that now as DPI down on there. It goes to actually sniper mode instead. 
and then DPI up still does the cycling through. Obviously, we then have to manually change things. But again, you can have profiles for those, so you can change into a different profile. And then it's just back to default. Or you just go through and delete those assignments. So there's plenty of different customization there. Then you've got lighting effects. So obviously, naturally, Corsair product, various different lighting things, including lighting link, where you can sync it up with other Corsair devices. So you can get it to respond there and, and link up with those. Or you can choose a specific color for it. I don't, I'm not too bothered about the RGB lighting on this. The only ones that are visible really are these strips, depending on how you hold your mouse and maybe the front bit. So some of this on the front. There is a small bit at the back here as well, but again, that's not visible when you've got your hand on top of it. Now, quick note, hardware lighting is for when Corsair IQ is not running. So if your PC is locked or if you don't have IQ running all the time, you set IQ up with hardware lighting, which saves it to the mouse so you can then set your specific lighting preferences in there and not have to worry about changing it or seeing it change and not doing what you want it to. So if you're finding that you've got the wrong RGB lighting, that's why. You can also calibrate your surfaces and other things in here. So you've got a specific mouse mat you want to calibrate to. Plenty of different options in there. So all told, a pretty good mouse, I think. If you prefer slim line mice with loads of buttons, 11 buttons, decent specs, responsive switches and more, then this might be the one for you. Stick around now for a sound test and give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Drop me a comment down below to let me know what you think. All of that helps support the video as well, so I appreciate you watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.